In this video, we will introduce neural models for logistic regression and its connections to the other architectures that we have discussed so far. Like the Witterhoff method and the SVM, the logistic regression method is also a binary classification technique. So again, as in the SVM and in the Witterhoff method, we have training pairs xi, yi, where each xi is a d-dimensional feature vector and yi is a binary class variable drawn from either minus 1 or plus 1. In the case of logistic regression, we have a probabilistic form of the prediction of the class variable. So here, what we do is that we take the dot product of the weight vector w and the training instance xi, and then we apply the sigmoid function to it in order to obtain a value between 0 and 1. This value between 0 and 1 is assumed to be the probability that the class variable is plus 1. So how can we ensure that this type of model will have good performance? The idea is to maximize the probability that this predicted value of yi, so the predicted value of yi, which I denote by yi with a hat on it, is probability yi is equal to 1. So we want to maximize this value for positive class instances and uh, we want to minimize this value for negative class instances. Of course, minimizing this value for negative class instances is the same as maximizing 1 minus hat yi for the negative class instances. Now, we can convert this uh, into log likelihood form, the log probability, which is common in such probabilistic models. So maximizing yi is the same as minimizing minus log yi. And similarly, uh, maximizing 1 minus yi is the same as minimizing minus log uh, 1 minus yi for negative instances. We can, in fact, write this loss in an integrated form. Uh, which is essentially the, the negative logarithm of the modulus of yi by 2. Note that the first yi is the observed value of yi minus 0 0.5 plus hat yi, which is the predicted value of yi and the negative logarithm of that. Of course, there's an alternative form which we can express directly in terms of uh, the class variable and the weight vector of the training instance, uh, which is essentially uh, the logarithm of 1 plus exponentiation of minus yi w xi. So uh, one question that arises is that why did we use the negative logarithm to create this minimization function? So log logistic regression is an example of a maximum likelihood objective function. So in maximum likelihood methods, you want to maximize the probability that all instances in your training data are correctly classified. Now, if you make the independence assumption among the different training instances, what you really get is that you're trying to maximize the product of the probabilities of correct classification over all training instances. Now, if you take the logarithm, uh, you, you can convert the product to a sum. And of course, if you take the negative logarithm, then you, you can convert the maximization problem into a minimization problem. So essentially, uh, you get an additive minimization problem, which is what loss functions are always all about. So essentially, what you are minimizing is the negative logarithm of this expression over there yeah, at the bottom of the slide. So let's look at what does the neural model for logistic regression look like. So the neural model for logistic regression, again, it's very similar to the SVM. It has the same number of input nodes, one for each feature value. And again, it has one output node. However, one difference is in the nature of the activation function in the output node. Here, we are using the sigmoid activation, which is required to convert the prediction into a probability. And similarly, the loss function is also somewhat different uh, in the case of logistic regression. So now, what you really have is that you have a predicted output, which is a probability, and a negative log likelihood loss. 
so uh, as in the case of all other models you can do a standard gradient descent technique you can take the gradient of this loss function with respect to the weight vector and when we take the gradient of this loss function with respect to this weight, uh, weight vector uh, you get the form of the update which is shown at the bottom of the slide here again alpha is the learning rate so uh, this particular form of the update, the, there is a very important multiplicative factor in the update increment. If you go back to the previous slide, it is 1 divided by 1 plus expy w dot xi. Let me go back to the previous slide. You can see that in the denominator. 1 by 1 plus exp yi w dot xi. So for now, uh, ignore the numerator for a minute, uh, that yi xi in the numerator. And let's look at this uh, expression in the denominator. This value, if you compare it to the probabilities of prediction, the way in which logistic regression predicts probabilities of positive instances and negative instances, uh, when you substitute yi is equal to 1, what you really get, this is 1 minus hat yi for positive instances. And if you substitute yi is equal to minus 1, what you get is uh, you, you get hat yi for negative instance. So in both cases, you are getting the probability that your classifier is making a mistake. Uh, it, it's, uh, so be, be, because hat yi is the probability that an instance belongs to the positive class. So you can interpret the update in the previous slide as a mistake driven update so essentially your update is really you're taking the weight vector you're taking the probability that your model is making a mistake on xi yi and you're multiplying by it by yi xi and then you're multiplying by the learning rate and you're adding to the weight vector now this should remind you that virtually all the models that we have seen so far they are somehow or the other mistake driven models so this brings us to the natural point how are the updates related among all the models we have seen so far? So, th so again, there's a very interesting unified form of the update that you can construct for all the four models we have seen so far. That is the perceptron, the SVM, the Widrohoff, and logistic regression. In each case, uh, you have, you're adding something to the weight vector. In each case, you have a learning rate, you have a YI, you have XI as a multiplicative factor uh, in the update. The only thing which is different is the nature of the mistake function. That's uh, denoted here by delta xi yi. This quantity is the raw mistake value 1 minus yi w xi for the Widrohoff method. It is a mistake indicator uh, uh, for the perceptron whether or not you are misclassifying a test. So it's either 0 or 1 depending on whether or not you are misclassifying. It is a margin mistake indicator in the case of the SVM. So in the case of the SVM, uh, it's a one not only for the case of misclassification, but also if the training point is uncomfortably close to the decision boundary. And the case of logistic regression, it is the probability that your prediction is a mistake. That's because logistic regression is a probabilistic model. So its mistake function also has a probabilistic interpretation. So as you can see, all the updates are mistake-driven updates, they are, and they are all kind of similar. So can we compare the loss functions? So again, uh, I have compared their loss functions. So here, uh, in this slide, what I have shown uh, is a graph where on the x-axis is the dot product between the weight vector and the training vector. So now we are assuming that this training instance belongs to the positive class. So the larger the dot product between W and X, the less the loss ideally should be, right? Because a positive instance, you want the dot product between the weight vector and X to be as large as possible. However, this is actually, as you'll see, for one of the techniques, which is the Widrohoff method, once WX exceeds one, actually the penalty starts increasing. This is something that I discussed in my lecture on the Widrohoff method, that the Widrohoff technique actually shows retrogression for well-separated points, and that you can see in the slide over here, where it is the only uh, loss function which actually increases beyond a certain value of the dot product between W and X. All the other methods, so for example, if you look at the perceptron uh, criterion and the SVM hinge loss, 
they are exactly the same shape except that one is shifted from the other. Again, we had discussed this in a previous lecture. The interesting case is when we compare the shape of the loss function of logistic regression and the SVM. Now, the shape of the loss function is very similar between logistic regression and SVM, except that logistic regression is a smooth loss. It smoothly decays with increasing value of WX. Whereas SVM is a hinge loss where it reduces up to the case where the dot product between WX is 1 and then it stays at 0. So now the in practice, when you apply the linear SVM uh, and linear logistic regression, uh, you tend to obtain very similar results. And this is explained by the similarity in the nature of their loss functions as well as the similarity in the nature of their updates. Finally, we end with some uh, comments about logistic regression. One of the points that you will repeatedly see in future lectures is that many classical neural models, they, re they use repeated computational units with logistic and TANA activation functions. Now, the TANA activation function is really a scaled and translated uh, version of the sigmoid activation function. So really, in both these cases, they are kind of like feature engineering models where they are using multiple logistic regression models in their different layers. So it's almost like stacking different logistic regression models. And the stacking of multiple models often creates inherently more powerful models than their individual components. And this is one of the ways in which neural networks gain their power over these shallower neural models.